Well, today we're going to talk about mid-segment theorem. This week the IXL codes are still the same. Um, try and get through these three. They're more about triangle inequalities, but um, good review. So what is a mid-segment theorem? So we still are talking about our triangles. And what we're finding is this thing in the middle of a triangle. We're finding this, this segment and that's why it's a segment, okay, of a triangle. We still have a triangle, okay? But what we're noticing is this mid part. This mid means that we are finding the midpoints. The midpoints between A and B and the midpoints between A and C. And if we do that, what we are creating is this line right here in the middle. And what we're going to find out is that line is parallel to this line. So DE is going to be parallel to BC. And not only that, if I know the number of this line from B to C, I can cut it in half to find D to E. And if I knew the measure of DE, then I could just double it to find the measure of BC. Okay? So... That is what a mid-segment is. And we, we did an activity in class before I, I even opened this presentation, and they're going to do that on Tuesday, um, to hopefully really solidify the idea. Um, I cut triangles out to very specific lengths, and they're going to measure them with the ruler, find the midpoints, and then connect the dots and see the, the, the measure of that. So they're going to find these midpoints and find the measure of this and then see that the relationship is going to be half or double the size is what I'm hoping that activity will do. We'll see. But I'm sure it will be successful. My students are extremely bright, so I'm not too worried about it. All right, so let's take a look at this. I have L, which is 2 comma 7. I have M, which is 10, comma, 9. And we'll have one more. Let's go with the deep. I kind of feel like Bob Ross said her sometimes. An 8, comma, 1. When you are finding order pairs, and I've noticed this with my students a little bit too, is you always want to start at zero and figure out how many jumps in one direction and then how many jumps so we're going right or left and then we're going up or down so it took me two jumps to the right which is why the first number is two and then seven up to get the rest okay so if you ever struggle with order pairs um, next trimester I'm really gonna start with just let's plot some points create a picture and really solidify that in but I apologize this try okay <clears throat> so let's do some work what they want us to do is show the mid segment of a triangle is parallel to the third side and it's half as long as the third side so one of the things we have we got the ordered pairs they tell us P is the midpoint of LM so we're gonna go P is here okay Q is the midpoint of MN. Q is there. And then we want to show that PQ is parallel to LN. Okay. Well, there's a lot of things going on. First thing we want to do is find P. P is the midpoint of L and M. So let's take L, which is 2 comma 7, and M, which is 10 comma 9, and I'm going to put x1, y1, because it's the first point I wrote down, x2, y2, because it's the second point, and I want to find the midpoint for P. So I'm going to take my <coughs> x1 and x2 
and add them together and then divide by two. So I'm going to do two plus 10 divided by two. And that's gonna give me my X value for my ordered pair. Okay, let me do that too. And then for the next one, I want to do Y1 plus Y2. So Y1 plus Y2 divided by two. So now I'm gonna do seven plus nine and divide that by two. So now my midpoint for P is going to be 12 divided by two, which is six. And then seven plus nine is 16 divided by two, which should be eight. So this should be six comma eight is my midpoint for P. And if we look over at six up to eight, mm, that kind of that hopefully would solidify a little bit. All right, now let's find Q's midpoint. So Q is in between is in between M and N. So I need point M, which is ten comma nine, and N, which is eight comma one. And now we can find the midpoint for this problem. So I'm going to do, uh, let's go back here, change it to green. So this was green, top was green. So I want the top to be green as well. So I'm going to, oh, I didn't label X1, Y1. X1, Y1 is my first order pair. X2, Y2 is my second order pair. Now I can highlight x1, x2 because that's what I want for the midpoint. I'm going to do 10 plus 8 divided by 2. And then we'll do y1, y2. 9 plus 1 divided by 2. And we'll highlight that. Okay, so my q midpoint is going to be nine and five all right now we want to see if this slope l to m oh i can already tell what this is so let's copy and paste no not all that work it's okay, I promise. All right. So we have this right here. So what I need now is to find the slope. So I need to find the slope between P and Q. And remember the slope right here, uh, let's use yellow is y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So I've got x1, y1, x2, y2. Hopefully this is review for people. Minus eight, and then I'm going to have nine minus six, and that's gonna be negative three over positive three, which is just gonna be negative one. So I found that the slope between these two points is negative one, okay? So now what I wanna do is do that same idea for L and uh, not M, but N, which is eight comma one. So I've got X1, Y1, X2, Y2, and then I'm gonna find the slope between those. So the slope is y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So we're gonna do one take away seven, eight take away two, and this is gonna be negative six over positive six, which is negative one. So we can show that those two are parallel. Um, the Q what is my Q it's Q's order pair oh nine comma five I might not ever put it on there 
comma five. Okay, so now if we do the distance formula, where we can find the distance between these two points, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, and then take the square root of the whole thing. This is review, so I will plug in the points and give the distance, but x1, y1, x2, y2, I'm going to do nine, take away six, square it, plus five, take away eight, square it, but the distance between PQ is going to be um, <coughs> 9, 9 square root of 18. Now if we do that same scenario for L to N, and we already have X1, Y1, X2, Y2 set up, so let's do that. It's going to be 1 minus 7. Oh, no, 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 no. Those are y's. Sorry. Start with x's. 8, take away 2, square it. 1, take away 7, square it. This is going to be 6, so 36 and 36. Thirty-six. So this is going to be the square root of 72. Which hopefully, if you broke it down, the square root of 4 times the square root of 18 should come out to be the square root of 72. And then we have 2, the square root of 18 which we said this was going to be twice as long as this. So if this is 8 squared 18, then this is 2 squared 18. Now, you could simplify the radicals even more, but I'm just trying to show that one is twice as big as the other. This is a lot of review, not necessarily what this unit's focused on, but it's a great final exam review kind of question. Definitely brings back midpoint, slope, distance formula, there's a lot of great things in this problem that we can discuss. But when you're looking at just this, like use the triangle mid-segment theorem to find the following lengths. If this is 88, double it. So 176, I think. 88, 88, 16, 16, 17, 176. Okay, if this is 162, Divided by 2, 81. If this is 56, double it, 112. And then this is 124 divided by 2, 62. So you can quickly get from one to the other uh, by doubling or cutting it in half. It's up to you, whatever you feel more comfortable with. Uh, but that's the relationship between the mid-segment and the base side. That's directly across. And we know all of these are parallel lines. So we have corresponding angles. We could do some... I uh, can't really do alternate here, but you can use corresponding quite a bit. It's different shapes of that nature. So that's what we're going to try and do this time. If I know, let's start to label what we do know. I do know that this is 10.2, which makes each of these 5.1, because another part of the mid-segment theorem is it's in the middle. It's a midpoint. So if this is 5.1, then this side's 5.1, the whole thing's 10.2, and the side across from it is 5.1. Let's change colors, and if I talk about this right here, it's 5.6 then this is 5.6 and this 
is 5.6. So there's a lot of information that we know. We haven't connected W and V, so we don't know U and S or U and R, but hopefully this question is not asking us that kind of information. But let's try and look at, so I, and all I did was write down what I knew. I didn't come up with anything else. Let's see, UW, U to W is 5.1, V to T, so V to T, 5.1. Angle, S, V, U, angle, W, U, W, T. Let's hold off on the angles for a second. Let's just do the sides. R to T, where's R to T? Ooh, so I want to double 5.6. So 5 and 5 make 10, 6 and 6 make 12. So we're going to do 11.2. So if we do 5.6 and 5.6, that's going to be the 2, carry the 1, 10 plus 1 is 11, and then keep the decimals in line, boom, 11.2. RW, well, we already knew because it was a half of it, 5.6. Now, here's where you have to play this game. So we are looking for SVU. So let's take our highlighter out, S to V to you. We're looking for that angle right there. Well, if that's the case, I know this line is parallel to this line. And you're going to go, well, why does that matter? Well, we know that, and it is going to matter to us because we have this angle of 41 degrees, and what did we just create? The Z shape. So I know this angle is equal to that angle by alternate interior angles two parallel lines cut by a transversal okay it creates the z shape so i know this is going to be 41 degrees as well and if we continue on that path of parallels and non-parallels think about this I'm going to take some of the color away. But if I have this line, isn't that parallel to this line? Cut by a transversal. So I've got alternate interiors here as well. And you're going to go, Schmidt, but that's not what it's asking for. It's asking for UWT. And UWT is right here. And I would go, yes, you are absolutely correct. But what do I have right here? I've got a straight line. And anytime you have a straight line, the measure of a straight line for all my students will know it's 180 degrees. So if I have 180 degrees equals angle R W U plus angle U W T, and I know R W U is 41 plus angle U W T. Subtract 41 from both sides, and I get this to be 139. Because I'm going to subtract 41 from both sides. So 180 minus 41. Um, well, if it was just 40, it would be 140. But taking one more away will be 139. So that's how we can use the mid-segment to help us answer all these questions. And I hope that clears it up a little. But... Yeah, that's what we're doing with the triangle, with the mid-segment stuff. So pause the video, see if you can do this, and then come back and double check it. Okay? But I'm just going to label what I know. So if I know this is 39, I know this is 39, and that's 39. divided by 2, 47.5, and 47.5, and 7, oh no, reconnect, okay, oh man, 
47.5. Okay. And they didn't connect the last one. So once again, we're only using two mid segments. All right. So what else I know is, where's my orange? I need orange. Because I know this angle right here is 105. So I know this is 105 because of the F shape. And I know this is 105 because of the Z shape. And then I have a straight line. So I know this is going to be 75. And this is going to be 75. Okay, so however you want to look at this, JL, J to L, we said is 78, J to M, 39, MLK, so angle MLK is 105, PML, 75, PM 47.5 and NK 47.5. So just by filling in stuff that we knew, um, we actually answered all the questions that we needed. So that's how you start to establish this relationship between everything. So um, yeah, and continuing to do this process. Now, here's one where I know QR is equal to two times UW. Uh, actually, <laughs> flip that. Two QRs, because remember, it's there's a mid segment here. So one QR, one QR, one QR. So I know two of these will match up to whatever this is, UW. So I'm gonna take my mid segment which is 2x minus 16. I'm going to double it, and then I'm going to set it equal to the other one, which is 2x minus 10. So I know this and this. So two of these, so two of the highlights equal the bottom one altogether. So now distribute it in and I got 4x minus 32 equals 2x minus 10. I'm going to highlight my variable, draw a line down the middle of the equal sign. So I want to subtract 2x from both sides because I want to put all the x's on one side of the equation. And that's going to leave me with this. So let's move the 32 to the other side. So now I want to add 32 to both sides and that's going to leave me with 22 equals 2x divide by 2 and x equals 11. Now 11 is great but it's not done. Now we have to find qr and qr is 2x minus 16 so it's 2 times 11 minus 16 so that's 22 minus 16 So QR should equal six, I'm hoping, if my mental math is right, because 20 minus 10 is 10. So then I'll have 12 minus six, which should be six. And if you go, I don't know what you just did, that's okay. I'm just doing my number sense. 22 minus a 10 is 12. So I get rid of the 10 that way. And then if I only have 12 left, 12 minus six, well, six and six make 12, so I know I cut it in half. Okay, thanks. All right, uh, UW is two X minus 10. So UW equals two times 11 minus 10, so that's 22 minus 10, and that's gonna be 12 which is twice as big. Awesome. Practice, pause, practice on your own. Double this one, set it equal to that one, plug it in. 
And then lastly, compare the perimeters. So what do we know about the perimeter of this? Well, aren't each of these twice, 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 twice? So the perimeter of A, B, C is going to equal twice the perimeter of D, E, F. And why is X, Y not a mid-segment of the triangle? Because these two need to be equal to whatever that mid-segment is. This mid-segment should be, all three of these values should be the same. If they're not, it's not a mid-segment, it's something else. <coughs> All right, well, that takes care of mid-segment.